I met another guy out there. And then a week or two later, I heard that he and a friend of his had held another guy down and pulverized his left leg with a lead pipe, like just pulverized it. And the reason for that was that they thought that he was a snitch, and, and maybe he was. And instead of being shocked and horrified by that, although I certainly was, I thought, how in the world could you do that? Because I didn't think I could do that. Eh? I, I didn't think that, I thought that there was a qualitative distinction between me and those people. So I spent about two weeks trying to see if I could figure out under what conditions I could do that. And it, it only took about 10 days for me to realize that not only could I do that, that it would be a hell of a lot easier than I thought it would be. And that's sort of where that wall between me and what Jung described as the shadow started to fall apart. And that also was very useful because I started to treat myself as a somewhat different entity because I hadn't been aware up to that point, you know, because I thought I was a good guy. And, and there's no reason for me to think that because you're not a good guy unless you've really made a bloody effort to be a good guy. You're just not. It's not easy. And so you're probably a moderately bad guy. And that's a long ways from being an absolutely horrible guy, but it's also a long ways from being a good guy. And so, but I had a little more respect for myself after that because I also understood that there was a monstrous element to the human psyche that, that you needed to respect. And that was part of you, that you should regard yourself in some sense as a loaded weapon. About the same time, I guess it was because I was trying to figure out who I was and how that could be fixed. I started to pay very careful attention to what I was saying. I could feel a sort of split developing in my psyche. And, and one part was the, let's say the old me that was talking a lot and that liked to argue and that, that liked ideas. And there was another part that was watching that part, like just with its eyes open and neutrally judging. And the part that was neutrally judging was watching the part that was talking and going, that isn't your idea. You don't really believe that. You don't really know what you're talking about. That isn't true. And I thought, hmm, that's really interesting. And that was happening to like 95% of what I was saying. So then I had a, this weird conundrum. It was like, well, which of these two things are me? Is it the part that's listening and saying, no, that's rubbish. That's a lie. That's, you're doing that to impress people. You're just trying to win the argument, you know. Was that me or was the part that was going about my normal verbal business me? And I didn't know, but I decided I would go with the critic. And then what I tried to do, what I learned to do, I think, was to stop saying things that made me weak. And that, that I mean, I'm still trying to do that because I'm always feeling when I talk whether or not the words that I'm saying are either making me align or making me come apart. But anyways, I decided that I would start practicing, not saying things that would make me weak. And what happened was that I had to stop saying almost everything that I was saying. It's a hell of a shock to wake up and realize that you're mostly dead wood. It's a shock, you know, and you might think, well, do you really want all of that to burn off? It's like, well, there's nothing left but a little husk, 5% of you. It's like, well, if that 5% is solid, then maybe that's exactly what you want to have happen.